Hey, what's up folks? So, I've got a problem that I've had for several years now, and the problem is this. I have a website that reports for your address who your local elected officials are, and that's a problem for two reasons. One, I don't really follow politics that closely, so I, in addition, political folks can change in midstream like if they get sick or they go to jail and uh, I don't get notified of these changes. Problem number two is uh, local elected officials are very sensitive people so if you don't have their information just right they get really angry about that. So I decided to code my way out of this and what I decided the easiest thing to do would do screen scrape a site with the elected officials and I can see if that that page changes. Now I found this site for our local board of elections and it has all the elected officials. It's a .NET page complete with the lovely view state wall of text. What the hell is that? Yeah, .NET. Well, this seems like the perfect thing. When it changes, I should be able to pick up that change and run with it. It'd also be nice if when it changed, I could kind of tell not only that it changed, but what changed. So I'm not digging through this five miles of text, looking at every single thing. So the way I did that, the easiest way to do that would just be with curl or wget and just compare two files. Who wants to do the easy, do it the easy way? I use Node and Puppeteer. Puppeteer is a headless Chrome thing. It's like a Chrome browser that you don't see, but it still can go out and do browsery kind of things. And I did it two ways. One, I'm doing, or I can do an image comparison. So we'll take a screenshot of the site and compare it to an old screenshot and detect changes. The other way I'm doing it is, or, or can do it, is through text, looking at text changes. With Puppeteer, you don't have to look at the whole HTML page. You can snip out in a JavaScript empty kind of way, same way you do it, say, on the console, pull out particular elements. You can pull out particular elements on the page in Puppeteer and just look at those. So, no bevel. Let's see how I did this. So I'm only using four node packages for this. I'm using .env to read an env file libnotify to give me a notification and libnotify is a Linux thing if you're using something else uh, there's a node-notifier module you can use uh, I'm using pixel match which is a package by Mapbox to detect changes in or differences between two images and Puppeteer is our headless browser so Here's the, our index.js, our, our controller, more or less. And you've got two options. You can either go the, the image route or the text route. And that's going to be set in your, your env file. Here you're going to set the page you want to look at and the type, whether it's txt or png. For a txt file, you can specify a selector. Like on that uh, web page, we look at the source, there's this ID of table one, and each one of these things is a subtable within that table, which is an interesting way to lay that out, but uh, who cares? If you don't specify a selector, uh, it will just get the entire HTML. So it will still work if you don't have a particular selector. You're just more prone to weirdness, like a uh, they just changed uh, the author and the meta, and it's going to flag that as a change, which, which you probably don't want. So we have it set at PNG. So that's going to check that here, and then go to this site check PNG function. And these are async functions because we're returning promises from a lot of this code. First thing we're going to do is check and see if this baseline image, which will be our, our image to compare to, exists. If not, the first time you run it, it is going to create that for us, and that's pretty much it. I don't care about your new minor version. 
So now we have this baseline PNG in our image folder. We run it again. What it's going to do is create a, com a compare.png. And as you keep running it, it's going to make more compare.pngs, or it's going to replace that file. And that's going to be the thing we check against. You notice it didn't do anything there because our compare and our baseline are just the same. If we change it, like if we go grab our baseline and monkey about with it a bit, like a uh, I don't know. What do you want to do? Let's, uh, uh, am I getting that? Oh, Hey, that, that definitely changed. So we'll save that. And now when we run it, You see, I get this notification on the screen uh, that says, oh God, something's changed. And because I have KDE connected as, as well, you can't really see it, but that's gonna show up on my phone too. So how did we do all that? Well, the first thing this runs is this fetch page. And the fetch page takes the URL as an argument and what you want to name the image. So fetch page, or fetch, it's, it's running this page PNG function, and this launches Puppeteer. So it's essentially like launching a browser. And it's going to navigate to that page, and then it's going to take a screenshot of that page and save it to that file. Now, you want to specify this full page is true, otherwise it's going to take a snapshot of only the top part of the page. The Puppeteer has a default browser view window size, which you can you can change if you want. But we want the whole thing. So make sure you got a full page is true. And it's just going to close the browser and that fetches that image, whether it's we passed it to fetch the baseline or the compare. After that, it's going to fire it off to the uh, PNG diff function in the compare module. So here we're going to get those two images and those we have those two images uh, we're going to take a diff or uh, this pixel diff does a diff of those two images and detects if there are any pixels changed and what it returns is a number and it's the number of pixels changed and once we have that we know whether it's changed or not if it has changed, we'll write the diff file, or essentially the changes, out to a new image, and we'll return the number of changes. So we're basically looking, we're checking this to see if it's above zero, so we know something's changed. Once it does that, let's run this compare PNG diff, it'll run the notify function. The notify just says, if you got a change that's bigger than zero, means something changed, then set out this notification. And I'm setting a time there. The default for libnotify, I think, is five seconds, which means it might come and go before you've seen it. This is in milliseconds, so this is like five hours, which means I'm, I'm probably going to see it at some point. Wonderful. So that is how that works. And the neat thing about this is you can pull up this uh, diff.png and you can zoom right into where you see that little you can see it's showing in red the part that changed and you can see exactly where the file changed so you don't have to go rummaging through the whole thing and a b comparing and, and see what's what's happened so that's how you do it as an image let's do it now as text i'm going to go back into this env file and change this to text or txt now when I run it the first time, it's going to uh, fetch the text file. And this will run a lot quicker because it's not having to make a 1.6 megabyte snapshot and save it to disk. It's just saving a bit of text. What it's saving to text is just the, uh, the 
uh, values of the the inner HTML of the TDs of the tables inside that table one. So essentially just all the data. This is a really handy way to do it in case somebody's monkeyed about with like they added a style to the table or something. It, it, it won't be bothered by that sort of thing. So we ran it the first time. This is going to our site check.txt and it didn't exist the first time so it just fetches our baseline and stops. Now if we run it again, in that text folder, it's going to make a compare.txt. You notice nothing happened here. Let me get rid of the old message. Nothing happened here because those are the same. If we go monkey about with baseline txt, like, uh, I don't want to uh, do, do anything too political. Let's say Senator Tillis bought the whole building, so now he's not just in suite 170. Now if we run this, See, we get this notification, it detected that change. We can there from there go uh, new diff. Uh, and it'll show us it's exactly line 17 here where we've got a change and what the change was. So, yay! Now I can just schedule this up and off it goes. Let, let's see how it made the TXT comparison. So first we're going to go fetch the page and that's going to run this page txt uh, function in the fetch module. We're going to launch another puppeteer and we're going to open that page. But instead of doing a screenshot this time, we're going to make a data array, which is going to be the inner HTML. Uh, and it's using the selector. If you didn't specify a selector, that selector, the default value is star, and it's going to get the entire web page. Now it's getting all of the inner HTML of those TDs. Then we're going to write that out to a text file, joining the array with a carriage return. So it's one on each line, which makes it easier to find the changes later. So that's how it does our fetch with Puppeteer. Then it's going to do our comparison, and this is much easier than the image comparison. We're just loading those two text files as strings, UTF-8s. And then if they're equal, we return a zero. And this is simulating a pixel difference. Uh, if they're not equal, we return a one, which means there's something that's changed. So then notification will pick up that that value is greater than zero, and I'll send out a notification. So that is how to do that. I can cron this up and run it however often I want and it'll detect a change assuming they didn't really screw around with that web page and even if they did screw around that web page it'll let me know I need to make a new baseline uh, it'll detect that I'll get a notification and hopefully uh, angry local officials will not be sending me flaming emails in the future this code is up on github uh, it's Feel free to use it however you want. If nothing else, try playing around with Puppeteer. Puppeteer is really, they've cooked in a lot of magical stuff into Puppeteer. You could even use it for things like, if, if you wanted to quick and dirty, I need to be able to print this site as a PDF. Assuming you can get to that exact state through the URL, you could just pass it off to a service with Puppeteer and say Puppeteer, load that page and then save it as a PDF and send it back. It, there, there's a lot of things you could do with it. So I'll put a link to the GitHub repo in the show notes. And that's about the end of the year. I hope however you celebrate the winter solstice, you've had a great time and a great year and you're going to have a great new year. If uh, you're stressed out or you're alone or whatever else is going on with you right now, just know that holidays are stressful and sometimes you can find yourself alone and things go in cycles and things will get better. So I hope you have a great one and I'll see you in 2019. Bye-bye.